Episode 45 of the Interpretation Station is called to order. Welcome everybody. Please be seated. How are you all doing? Good health. Um, new episode today then of the Interpretation Station. I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Uh, my original intention today would be to do an episode, one of my standard tutorials, one of the bigger one of the bigger ones, right? I'm just going to do three of them. hour long and you'll come out you'll know what to sort of look out for you know what sort of tips and tricks to get you through it because um it can be a subject you, it's pretty tricky to wing some of this stuff some of the uh some of the the, the jargon some of the vocabulary is it's very sensitive also it's not just that it's complex it's very sensitive you need to be careful that you don't say the wrong things all right um that's a particular particularly the case as i say um with this convention okay so what i'll do first of all i'm going to share my screen with you and uh, just give you the quick background so the crpd um in english of rights of persons with with disabilities um the first thing just to say by the way but per persons with disabilities try if you're in a meeting about this subject, try and get the full sort of name out. Pers try and say persons with disabilities. I know it's a mouthful. Uh, I know that, uh, but just just try. You have got this um, acronym that, that does sometimes pop up PWDs, but it's it's nasty, you know, and it's uh, it, it's much easier to say. I know that, but uh, you don't really want to be the first person to use it. If you're in a meeting and it's being used a lot then yeah go for it and if you're struggling with a statement struggling to keep up then okay i think you've got you know you can you can use it you can get away with it but again i i'd, I'd be hesitant i wouldn't want to be the first person to go down that 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 road see what the feeling is in the room for any meeting you're in before before you use it and the other thing of course to remember with the uh when talking about persons with disabilities it's interesting in french uh, because in french uh, they still call persons handicapé, and in French, that's that um, 
that's okay to say. That's still sort of acceptable in, fr- in French. In English, however, avoid at all costs using the word handicapped. That's, all, that's worse than PWD. Uh, I know when I was a kid and in, you know, in the buses... I think, you, uh, you know, traveling, this, this, there was these seats that were always reserved for disabled person. I think it would say, you know, please give up your seat if a handicapped person comes along. But in English, it's just not really politically correct anymore to say handicapped. So uh, make sure you avoid that word, okay? So if I share my screen with you now, you can see here, it just gives you a bit of background uh, to the convention. Um... So it was signed in 2006, was it when it was um, uh, first signed. As you see, you've got ratifications, 182 so far, so uh, they're only 12 short from of universalizing. I think, is it the UN? Have we got 193 member states, or is it 194? Anyway, they're pretty close. And um, you've also got, the, the CRPD has also got an optional protocol sort of additional to it. Uh, when it was signed. You don't have to worry about, unless you're actually specifically doing a meeting of the CRPD, uh, which I sometimes do, working in Geneva, which is where the committee meets, that uh, optional protocol, it's quite a procedural document. It's all to do with what's called communications procedures. Uh, The procedure for, you know, when someone wants to submit a formal complaint or to bring a case before the committee, Basic, uh, go, and that basically sets out the procedure to be followed uh, and how uh, member states should sort of cooperate uh, in that process. Okay, so, and it's quite useful on this page, actually. You've got the, con- the, f- the, the convention. It's been translated into a lot of different languages. Okay, you've got the standard uh, UN languages here, but then you have a whole string of other languages that you can uh, find the equivalents for. Everything from... Aruban Papiamento to Kiswahili to Korean. So, um, yeah, it's been translated pre- uh, fairly widely. Okay, so let's move to the actual convention itself then, and I'll take you some of the key, through some of the key concepts here. And what I'm going to do is, as I said, I'm just going to be sticking to the English for the most part. Uh, what I'll do is, when, with the uh, as we go through it, I'm going to, then give you the sort of Spanish, Russian, and French equivalents up on the screen um, so that you'll know more or less yeah, how you can, what, which words to look, if you're going into English, what words to look out for, okay, from the other languages. I used to do, so at the CRPD, I've done this meeting, as I say, quite a bit at the UN, and um, not so much the last year, but um, there was a lot of Russian before, um, one of the members was, um, was a former Russian Paralympic athlete, and he was on the committee for two or three years. So the yeah, there was you, you, this this sort of conven- this convention, this committee does sort of go th- use many of the uh, many of the languages, the UN languages. All right, so starting off here in the preamble, and this is a sort of phrase that gets used. Uh, Actually, this this isn't really just specific, this one, to the, the CRPD. This is a phrase that generally, when you're dealing with human rights, the treaty bodies and so forth, is going to come up a lot in all, in all contexts okay, of human rights. The universality, the indivisibility, interdependence, and interrelatedness of all uh, human rights okay, and fundamental freedoms. So just generally, that is a good bit of jargon just to just to remember those words, the universality, indivisibility, interdependence, and interrelatedness. They do come as something of a package. Now, moving down on to here in the preamble in E, this is a very useful word I find when dealing uh, with the CRPD. Impairments. Um, it's got me out of trouble a few times. Uh, it's a good, very good synonym to have to just always think a, a disability all the time. Disability, disability. Impairments, you will find uh, it covers really all forms of uh, physical or, or mental disability. And uh, well, it gives you just makes you sound a bit more uh, competent, shall we say, rather than just 
repeating the same word over again. I, I, I always, when I come in, I write down impairments on a sheet of paper just to remind me because, um, yeah, it's a good word to, to know. And then this is, you know, the, this uh, whole phrase here, with impairments, attitudinal and environmental barriers that hinders full effective participation in society on an equal basis with others. So a lot of this vocabulary just here comes up frequently throughout the convention, the idea of barriers, barriers and obstacles that hinder participation. Uh, so you want sort of some synonyms for there as well, you know, hindering, impeding, hampering, and on an equal basis with others. Very much the, the thrust of this convention is trying to ensure that persons with disabilities can basically exist on an equal basis with others or on an equal footing with others. And then, oh, okay, moving down here to, to H, a violation of the inherent dignity and worth of the human person. This is another idea that runs through this convention, this, this specific wording, inherent dignity and worth. And again, this is, this is wording that you will see come up in other contexts. Actually, it's not just of persons with disabilities, but of any uh, sort of people whose, whose human rights are, are being violated or impinged on the... So it's something that will come up a lot, the inherent dignity and worth. So kind of going down to N now. This is, again, a very important concept for persons with disabilities. Recognize the importance for persons with disabilities of their individual autonomy and independence, including the freedom to make their own choices so one of the big you know that's one of the big priorities for organizations working for disabled people uh, is to for disabled people to to be independent to be able to live as much as possible as the same as able-bodied people can live to be have independence to have autonomy and be allowed to make their own choices that this their choices shouldn't be imposed or foisted on them by third parties. The idea is to make them, to have them integrated into society, making their own choices just as much as, as, uh, as able-bodied able people. So again, an important aspect of the thing is that how women and girls are treated. Uh, they're sort of considered, they have an, an added level of vulnerability to say, uh, shall we say, especially disabled women and girls. And as it says, they're often at greater risk, both within and outside the home of violence, injury or abuse, neglect or negligent treatment, maltreatment or exploitation. This is very useful vocabulary, this. Okay, so again, just uh, take note of it. Then we move to V here, subpara of V. The importance of accessibility to the physical, social, economic, and cultural environment. So again, the idea of accessibility is, is crucial when it comes to, to disability, that states should do what states, private companies, whatever, should do all they can to, to provide access which to disabled people, which is, you know, as as you know as the access should be of a higher quality as possible in the same way as able-bodied people have access to various institutions, buildings, etc. So that is a very important concept, that accessibility. Okay, so now we uh, we move to the the meat, if you like, of the uh, of the convention, and some uh, some very important uh, wording here. Okay, respect for their inherent dignity. I think we mentioned that before, and again, that that's a concept. Respect for inherent dignity. 
that, that runs through many of the, the human rights treaty bodies, many of the conventions. So that's just a good sort of set phrase to, to try and remember. And then we go on, persons with disabilities include those who have long-term physical, mental, intellectual, or sensory impairments, which in interaction with various barriers may hinder their full and effective participation in society on an equal basis with others. Okay, so a, a very important uh, concept here. Okay, mental and intellectual or sensory impairments. Okay, the physical impairments is fairly non-controversial, that's okay. So the word mental health problems tends to be slightly uh, sort of sensitive um, bit of wording. So when people, you know, the, again, when I was younger, you know, there was always talk about the people who are mentally handicapped. That's not good language really to use nowadays. Again, you want to avoid that. And so, if you if you you're in a you're, you know if you're interpreting and working and something and then you hear something that is of that nature, you want to be saying something like in intellectual impairments, intellectual disabilities, or sensory impairments. Which then you have the sensory impairments, which usually refer you know to problems with of sight, visual, hearing problems with balance that that's what that refers to but so the point yeah the main thing is again meant something you want to avoid mental the word mental I find even though it's in the actual um, even though it's in the actual convention it's remember the convention is from 2006 I think the uh, acceptable vo what's considered acceptable vocabulary in this field has perhaps evolved over the last 15 years so I would be rather wary of using uh, the word mental. And then I, as it, when I was reading it out, so again, these words that keep cropping up, the barriers, okay, hindering full participation on an equal basis with others, that these run through this convention, these, um, these concepts. Okay, uh, Article 2 then. So this is important. These are important concepts now when it comes to particularly the visually impaired. Okay, Blind is another word, by the way. Difficult to say blind is considered not quite, not quite right. You want to perhaps try and avoid using blind. Visually impaired is, is what I tend to try and go for. Again, if you're in a real rush, if you're falling behind, then it creeps in, but try and go for visually impaired. So these are, these are various formats for helping people who are visually impaired to, to read. So braille, tactile communication, large print, accessible multimedia, as well as written audio, plain language, human reader, and augmentative and alternative modes. So a couple of these concepts may be useful to get an idea of what they are. So plain language, uh, so it's here it tells you that plain language benefits all users, including people with cognitive disabilities, low reading literacy, people who are encountering an unknown topic or language. So I think basically it's like with books and things, and they are sort of, um, and the books are sort of reworked for the purpose of, for, to make them more understandable, more accessible for people who have maybe uh, intellectual impairments. And we have augmentative, and that augmentative you might be interested to know also. Augmentative modes of communication are for the severely speech and motor impaired. Uh, I'm, so again, I'm just reading this uh, from the internet. Uh, there's a large population of individuals whose speech impairments are so severe that they're unable to communicate effectively or fully through speech mode alone. For these individuals, augmentative communication techniques which can supplement their speech should be implemented to provide them with a fully functional communication system. So it's really, as I say, to, to help people with um, speech impairments, speech defects, to help them um, communicate with those around them.
Now, this is perhaps one of the most important concepts of all in the convention, uh, the idea of reasonable accommodation. And this really means, you know, it's the uh, so reasonable accommodation, as we see here, means the necessary and appropriate modification and adjustments, not imposing a disproportionate or undue burden when needed in a particular case to ensure to persons with disabilities the enjoyment or exercise on an equal base with others of all human rights and fundamental freedoms. So it's a very broad concept. And it's, it's one of the main things that the committee members will push with the member states, that they will really sort of drill down on this, that they want to know what the states have done to ensure reasonable accommodation, what, what they have done, what the states have done to adjust everything from... Uh, buildings or provide um, tool educational tools it's all everything that that would say the state can do and companies to make life easier uh, for persons with disabilities so if you remember nothing else from this episode remember reasonable the concept of reasonable accommodation and obviously I'm going to put the equivalents up in the Spanish French and Russian because you need that's one you really need to know Universal design is another one of these concepts that, again, runs through the convention. As you see here, it means the design of products, environments, programs, and services to be usable by all people to the greatest extent possible without the need for adaptation or specialized uh, design. And you hit, as we move down the text into Article 4, it comes up again here. Promote universal design and the development of standards and guidelines. And then here, okay, uh, mobility aids, devices, and assistive technologies. These, again, are all very important concepts when it comes to the issue of disability. You know, these are all tools for, again, helping persons with disabilities um, better, you know, access the world around them, be it uh, intellectually or physically. Further down in Article 4, uh, just some important wording. Not, not, this, isn't, this isn't really so specific to the, the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, but the derogation from any of the human rights recognized. That word is an important one. Uh, and so just, again, another uh, good word to know. It basically means there's no grounds that can be Ev invoked by the state to basically forego any of their uh, commitments they've assumed under the convention. They're not allowed to basically, you know, invoke state, you know, states of emergency or whatever martial law, and they can't just on the, on those grounds say, okay, because we've invoked that, well, we don't have to now. Uh, uphold the rights of persons with disabilities. So that's what that article is about. And that's, again, that's, uh, this is, again, wording that will come up in a lot of the other conventions as well, sort of placing the, um, the obligation on states to continue to deliver on the various rights, regardless of the uh, state of political affairs in a country. Okay, then coming out to um, Article 8, children with disabilities. This is a very, again, a very important uh, phrase to, to remember. Uh, the best interests of the child. Uh, and think, uh, I think in some of the other languages, the wording is such that you might be tempted to say the primary interest of the child. But in English, it's always the best interest of the child. So just remember it like that.
Okay, so Article 8, so awareness raising, you're the way that people with disabilities are portrayed in the media, generally. That's an important aspect. Uh, it's considered now to be an important aspect. So this wording is quite important. In, uh, encouraging all organs of the media to portray persons with disabilities in a manner consistent with the purpose of the present convention. So I guess probably back in the day, TV programs, media, um, they could perhaps pray, portray quite derogatory images of uh, people, persons with disabilities. So this sort of, again, places uh, an obligation on states to try and portray disabled persons in the shows in a, in a positive light, generally. Uh, Article 9, okay, accessibility. This is an important idea. And the wording, as I say, you'll see it's important. Access on an equal basis with others. There it comes again, okay. To the physical environment, to transportation, to information and communications, including information, communications, technologies and systems, and to other facilities and services open or provided to the public, both in urban and in rural areas. Uh, these measures which shall include the identification and elimination of obstacles and barriers to accessibility. So again, this is all with reference. Again, th this wording comes up again and again. And it's to do with, you know, if you read the rest of the... I'm not, I'm not going to highlight, you know, there's a lot of detail in this, uh, in this convention. Uh, some of the big deal, I haven't, I haven't gone into all of it. That's for you if you want to re read up on the rest of it. Uh, I've just highlighted what, I, for me, for my two or three years of experience of doing this committee are the concepts that are most important and come up most often. Uh, so again, things like this, you know, the elimination of obstacles and barriers to accessibility, again, in often in talking about public buildings, uh, again, in uh, companies, um, that they, they're placing, uh, again, an obligation on them to try and strive to put in place all the necessary physical uh, aids to, to help uh, disabled people get around, you know, everything from putting in ramps, lifts for wheelchairs, etc. Uh, you know, on buses, have being so that, a, so that a person in a wheelchair can actually get on the bus. Certainly here in Switzerland, you have the buses where the floor uh, it gets basically Low, it can low it can be lowered to the level of the pavement. The person in the wheelchair can get on, and it's then that floor is then raised, and the person can enter the bus. So it's all that kind of stuff that's covered by this. Uh, then moving down to here, this D, to provide in buildings and other facilities open to the public, signage in Braille. This is again an important, uh, important bit of uh, wording, signage. So that again, uh, people with visual impairments can find their way around public buildings, okay? So they have that option of, of using Braille. Okay, this is uh, Article 12, uh, legal capacity. Um, so this legal capacity it bas it basically means, you know, that fitness to, a, the idea of fitness, by the way, men, you know, physically, uh, fitness to stand trial. The point is to, again, try and ensure that uh, persons with disabilities are treated on a par with their sort of able-bodied counterparts. And that they can, again, this is to do with being able to take their own decisions at a, at a legal level without the need, again, for a third party to take the decision for them, like as a proxy. Going down again, Article 14, okay, liberty and security of person with disabilities. Again, here we go, provision of reasonable accommodation. Again, the, uh, the obligation or the placing the responsibility on the state to do everything they can to cater to the, to the needs of, uh, of persons with disabilities.
this is in particular is persons of disabilities who have been sentenced to prison. And there's a need again to ensure that uh, prisons, detention facilities, are properly sort of retrofitted to be able to, to house persons with disabilities. Uh, Article 15, this is an important uh, idea that runs again through a lot of the conventions. Freedom from torture or cruel, inhumane or degrading treatment or punishment. And it is, of course, one of that's actually one of the other conventions that the, uh, the CAT, the Convention Against Torture, and the rest of it is torture, cruel, inhumane or degrading treatment or punishment. That's to give it its full name. So that's just some wording that you want to be very much uh, familiar with. Uh, okay, and then consent here. Without his or her free consent to medical or scientific experimentation. So again, the idea that the person needs to provide his consent, his or her consent, to any procedure uh, that, he, uh, that he or she needs to undergo. Okay, and then here I've highlighted the idea of caregivers. That comes up a lot. That's used a lot generally when it comes to social issues. Um, protection, okay, state parties should ensure that protection services are age, gender, and disability sensitive. Again, this is another idea that runs through a lot of the conventions. That just that wording is useful to know. The, the sensitive, you know, age sensitive, disability sensitive, etc. Okay, moving down to Article Nineteen. This is very important, I think. Living independently and being included in the community. So that's the name of that article. I should look like this, in fact. Um, very important. Again, it's all to do with promoting the idea of full sort of integration of persons with disabilities, you know, enabling them to, be, to, to live next to, again, their able-bodied counterparts. on an equal footing, and then it's giving them the support, if you look down here, the support services that should be offered to them. These concepts, again, are useful to know. In-home care, residential, other community support services, including personal assistance necessary to support living and inclusion in the community, uh, and to prevent isolation or segregation uh, from the community. So again, that's just again a, an important general idea uh, to be to be aware of this idea of inclusion in the community. Okay, personal mobility, Article Twenty. There's a bit of technical stuff here that's that's important. The, these these various uh, assistive aids, okay, mobility aids, devices, assistive technologies. Remember these things. These are these are important. Just more, remember to be able to recognise them. Um, forms of live assistance and intermediaries, including by making them available at affordable cost. Again, that's an important notion for many things. That these aids should be provided and that they should be affordable, okay, or accessible if you want a synonym. Okay, Article 21, freedom of expression and opinion, access to information. So again, this is again reiterating this point about the various language tools uh, that should be provided to um, persons with disabilities. Sign language, braille, augmentative and alternative communication, as we discussed earlier. Another concept you might come across, I've come across more in the last few words, uh, it's called like easy reader. Uh, and this is, well, I'm, I'm just quoting again from what I read on the internet. I just thought it's a useful thing to bring up. Text and speech to allow readers with low vision 
blindness, dyslexia, or other learning disabilities that make reading difficult to enjoy reading books. So again, it's using, I think, it's the idea of including pictures in books to, you know, just to enhance the, to un, un, enhance understanding. Okay, Article 23. So I've highlighted here the right of all persons with disabilities who are of marriageable age to marry and to found a family on the basis of free and full consent of the intending spouses is recognized. I mean, I highlighted this because um, just the wording I find interesting. Uh, the marriageable age, um, found a family. These are, this, this is, these are useful sort of collocations to have. That I'd never even, marriageable age, I'd never even actually... I can't remember hearing that before, but there you go. It's in the actual convention. That's the, the specific wording they use. Uh, spacing of children. Perhaps you're familiar with this. Perhaps you're not. Perhaps you can probably work it out. So it's the idea of how much time in between, uh, in between each child that, that a woman may have. And then further down here, uh, some of these uh, concepts, again, are important. There's guardianship, wardship, trusteeship. Another one I've heard is curatorship. I've heard that, uh, that's come into existence, if you like, in the last few years. Um, pretty much synonyms. I guess there are nuances to all of them. You know, some, I guess it sort of uh, depends on whether the carer, the caregiver, is a family member or are they sort of appointed by the state but so again just be uh, be aware of them i find uh i often for example i i wouldn't like uh when i hear the other language i usually have one of these ideas i think i because curatorship is one that's been used a lot i often use that guardianship um you don't need to always have the exact like for like um for these concepts but it's just useful to, to know them. And again, again, a similar set of um, synonyms, if you like, here. Same article. Prevent concealment, abandonment, neglect, and segregation of children with disabilities. So often, you know, I, know, I certainly will talk about neglect um, of children, abandonment. Those are the two sort of words, that, the collocations that come spring to mind most easily for me. So again, it's good just to know what, what wording the convention uses and also to see what the equivalents are. Uh, in your in your other languages, in the source language. Uh, subject to judicial review. I've just highlighted that because that's a subject. That's this is that's a a sort of bit of jargon, a phrase that comes up a lot in in legal scenarios, in the context of legal cases in all fields. So not just this isn't just particular to persons with disabilities, but generally speaking, it's a good idea to know. It's, it's a good phrase to sort of try and remember, subject to judicial review, subject to appeal. It's basically a synonym of that. Moving down to Article 24, so again, development of human potential and sen sense of dignity and self-worth. So that's an important concept, I think, when it comes to persons with disabilities. The idea of you know, promoting their self-worth, or well, you can say self-esteem as well. Down here, we have, again, an old friend, reasonable accommodation. Uh, just again to show you how many times it appears throughout this uh, throughout this convention, and here again we have these learning tools. It's, again, just to remind you, facilitate the learning of Braille, alternative script, augmentative and alternative modes, means and formats of communication and orientation, mobility skills, facilitating peer support and mentoring. 
these are ideas that are raised all the time. Uh, and it's interesting here, okay, so C, so uh, ensuring the education of persons, and in particular children who are blind, deaf, or deaf-blind. So the funny thing is, I said that before, blind nowadays is slightly frowned upon just to say blind. You're better off, as I say, going for visually impaired. Deaf seems to be okay, um, as opposed to, you can say hearing impaired, or hard of hearing, I think I, I've used hard of hearing. I've also used hard of sight, by the way, for, for blind, I think they're okay. Deaf blind is also uh, acceptable. So deaf blindness, just to give you the actual definition, is the condition of little or no useful hearing and little or no uh, useful sight. So, but that, that is a condition and it's, you, you can say uh, uh, deaf and blind. And it just reminds me of another thing that was once considered acceptable, and again, that you should certainly avoid saying uh, deaf and dumb. That, that's definitely to be avoided, that expression. Do not want to say that. So again, you want to get into the, if you want to, you know, you could say uh, auditively and intellectually impaired. I mean, you're, this, you are rather walking on eggshells when it comes to the vocabulary in this convention. That's just that's the way it is. And so I, I, I hope I'm... Giving you with a few, giving you a few ideas of how to to walk those eggshells without breaking too many of them. Uh, moving on to Article Twenty Five. This is an important idea. Health. Uh, states parties, so this is on health. State parties recognize that persons with disabilities have the right to the enjoyment of the highest attainable standard of health without discrimination on the basis of disability. This is a good expression, the highest attainable standard of health. That's a good set phrase that runs through a number of the conventions, you know, for the rights of the child as well would be another one where you'd find that. Uh, sexual and, and then here we've got sexual and uh, reproductive health, which is often just known as SRH. You want to be careful. That, that can take you by surprise. Um, it's used increasingly. And in fact, there's not just SR, SRH, but you have now the concept of S, SRHR. And I tell you, I'm not kidding. It came up, this came up in a meeting of, that I was in today. Uh, it was about youth issues, and they were talking about SRHR. There was one NGO who was speaking about it, and she sort of launched into it without really telling you what it... It was in English, so I was lucky. I didn't have to do it, but it must, I can imagine it took some of my, uh, the, my fellow um, interpreters in the other booths by, by the surprise. S SRHR, Sexual and Reproductive Health and Rights. So that is a, an acronym that, that, that will be used. So just beware. Just beware. Uh, another important concept that runs through a lot of conventions, free and, uh, free and informed consent. Often you'll hear the prior, there's often prior free and informed consent. Uh, again, this is something that is raised, for example, when talking about indigenous people, rights of indigenous people, that they should have free prior informed consent of any decisions uh, regarding projects taking place in their lands. So here it's to do obviously with persons with disabilities that they need to be able to uh, give their consent to any procedure or any action taken uh, with regards to them. Article 26. Again, this was a bit of a new one to me. Uh, habilitation and rehabilitation. I'll just highlight that actually. Um, obviously, rehabilitation comes is, is is used frequently, but as I say, you can also use habilitation uh, by itself. And then down here at the bottom of that article, we have again a, the use of assistive devices and technologies designed for persons with disabilities 
as they relate to habilitation and rehabilitation. Um, moving now on to, this is now Article 27, Work and Employment. This is again another general expression that's good to know, redress of grievant grievances. All right. I think there was one episode, I think, when uh, this idea of redress, you know, you've got a few synonyms for it, and they all tend to come under R. You've got uh, uh, redress, there's, re there's redress, remedy, restitution. Okay, so they, they come as a bit of a package. It's easy to, you know, they all start with R, which makes it helpful. And again, when it comes to jobs, this is an I important idea. Promote vocational and professional rehabilitation, job retention, and return to work programs for persons with disabilities. So again, these are the sort of some of the um, steps that states should take to encourage uh, persons with disabilities to enter the labor market and stay there. So this is some of the vocabulary in, with regards to that. Okay, uh, then scrolling down to Article 30. Participation in cultural life, recreation, leisure, and sport. Now, this is, I've, I've highlighted this one in particular because, again, this reminds me of that Russian guy, that former member of the CRPD. This was a big thing for him. So he was, a, as I say, a former uh, Paralympian. And he would, um, whenever he was, uh, whenever they had the state's parties there and they had the, the hearing with them, this was always his, he would, almost, he would ask this question almost every time. What have you as the state done to promote the participation of disabled people in cultural life and sport? And then he'd quote examples, actually. You know, one thing I'd not know, I hadn't heard about, for example, uh, before doing that committee was so there's the Deaf Olympics. I, I, you know, you've got the Paralympics, which is obviously very famous, but there's also Deaf Olympics uh, for people with, uh, with hearing uh, impairments or auditive impairments, you can also say the Deaf Olympics. So um, that's a good event to know about. That you never know that might come in handy. Uh, and so, the, the, and so in this article, they highlight the importance of again accessible formats. That's again that's one of the buzzwords in this convention. Accessible here again, accessible uh, formats. Again, making also cultural activities, more accessible to persons with disabilities, you know, the theater, cinema, music, etc. Uh, and then we have this wording here, to develop and utilize their creative, artistic, and intellectual potential, not only for their own benefit, but also for the enrichment of society. So again, this Russian member, again, he often did use this wording, talking about, the, you know, to fully utilize their uh, creative, creative potential, to harness creative potential. This is, again, good vocabulary to, to know. And then further on down here, we have this on an equal basis with others. I often say on an equal footing with others. Uh, as I say, the convention language is on an equal basis with others. Uh, to ensure that persons with disabilities have access to sporting, recreational, and tourism venues. Okay, so that's very, very much the, the thrust of that article, to give them, as I say, equal access to all these places that able-bodied people would have. And then we're getting, we're getting close to the end now of the important part. Uh, statistics and data collection. This is an important element to ensure uh, confidentiality and respect for the privacy of persons with disabilities. That word generally, confidentiality, again, not just specific to persons with disabilities. Um, generally speaking, 
confidentiality and privacy, should I say. Both those two words are very important and are going to become increasingly important, I suspect, as, as concerns generally in society with the, uh, the advance of... Uh, with the, uh, with the advance of such things as artificial intelligence, uh, etc. Uh, Article 33, now we're getting quite technical here. Okay, this is national implementation and monitoring. So these, uh, these ideas, these later articles, they tend to be pretty similar from one convention to the next. Um, just what I thought was interesting. Persons with disabilities and their representative organizations. So you'll, he, you may often hear the, uh, an acronym DPOs, so they're disabled persons organizations. So they are like NGOs that represent um, disabled persons. So it's just good to know that, uh, that acronym, DPOs. So as I said, that's pretty much the, that's pretty much the, uh, the main things for me in that convention. I said there's a few, there's another 10 or so articles, but again, they are uh, pretty much copy pasted from all the other conventions. They're all quite technical. Um, so yeah, I hope that's given you a bit of an idea of what for me in my experience of doing that committee are the sort of main ideas. Uh, as I said, I've given you the, the, their equivalents in the, the sort of languages that I use. I hope they come in handy next time you're in a meeting. I suspect, as I say, this is an issue that's increasingly in the sort of spotlight these days. Um, so it's important to, to know what you're doing, as I say, especially given the sensitivity uh, of the issue. So I'm going to call it a day there. I'll be coming back later in the week then with uh, a statement, the statement by Kerry that I was originally going to do uh, on Haiti. Uh, I would advise you just to, to watch through this video, you know, learn some of this, hopefully learn some of the vocabulary that I've given you now uh, from that convention. And then once I post the link to the, uh, the Haiti statement later on in the week, you can do it and you'll be armed then with a whole range of new words that hopefully you can apply uh, when, the, when the Haitians are speaking. And that Haitian speech that we're doing, it's a real roller coaster ride, as, you, uh, you'll, as you'll see. I mean, Haiti, you can imagine disability is now a big problem there, you know, the repercussions of the earthquake, etc. So, um, yeah, hope that has been useful for you. So, if you've enjoyed the episode, if you found it useful, give me a thumbs up, please. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you know any colleagues, any. Um, in any field you think might benefit uh, from this video, who maybe work in that field, feel free to share the feel free to share the link with them to the video. And so, yes, with that, all that remains to be said. I'll see you later on in the week. And uh, episode forty-five of the Interpretation Station is adjourned. <laughs>